because we'll just talk before we get uh, JC on the line here. Uh, Dave P wants to take a look at plug power here. And uh, that stock uh, really is kind of has not been in the news here. A lot of consolidation here at the seven dollar level. A couple highs in this in the seven seven forty eight seven seventy. I mean, I guess you just gotta hope this thing can get a few more closes above seven. Got six fifty three yesterday. Closed at six ninety nine here. So. This seems like it's kind of range bound, but it's like a big range from like the mid sixes up to the higher sevens here. So still trying yeah. to figure out which way to go. Uh, perhaps an earnings report uh, will do the trick. We're bringing in uh, JC. Hi, JC. Hey, JC. It's uh, Joel and Dennis at uh, Options House pre-market show we're doing good we're on the air here so we just wanted to talk to you about this crazy market action over the last few days you surviving i am i am uh it's nice uh it's nice to get a little bit of a bounce in the market um interesting uh interesting last couple of days coming off the lows i'd like to see that what about the v bottoms that we're putting in here two days in a row i mean i just kind of thought that second one they just you know we're gonna lay this this thing out and it it turned it back. Is it just to buy the dippers in here? Are they just they just saving the day? You know, nothing goes straight down, right? So I I, I must say I am I am definitely impressed with some of the reversals yesterday. Uh, biotechs, particularly, um, you know, as someone who looks at a lot of different kind of candlesticks and things like that, um, you know, it's really really interesting seeing the reversal on Monday, seeing the reversal again yesterday. So for whatever reason, the dip buyers are coming in. There is some support from last year, you know, in XBI and things like that. And I think that's a big one. You know, the biotechs were, were leaders on the way up, and obviously they just got destroyed. So, um, you know, if the market's kind of going to bounce, you, you want to see these guys bounce as well and kind of lead them higher. You know, between you, me, you, you and me, I mean, you guys know I've been bearish all year. I think all that this will be is a bounce, and it's a fadeable bounce. But, um, you know, in bear markets, which I think uh, – uh, biotechs are right now um, the most violent bounces come within a bear market structure, right? Hey, JC, Dennis Dick here. I was reading your post here this morning. There, energy uh, over there at All Star Charts. You're posting energy looks intriguing on a relative basis, and we've actually been talking about it on the show for a couple of days here. You're right. A lot of these oil stocks, a lot of these energy stocks here, have been holding up very well. You look at like individual stocks like Exxon Mobil breaking out to two month highs, Chevron breaking out to two month highs here yesterday. And on your post there, you were highlighting the good relative strength here. Do you think it could be like a passing of the torch here? Like maybe you know the biotech and the financials were leading us there for a while. Now, is energy going to pull us out of this? It wouldn't surprise me one bit. You know, um, you know we look at a lot of cycles, and energy traditionally are, traditionally are late cycle names. I mean, this is where you typically see strength at the end of runs. And I, I wrote on the post, and you, know, you guys remember 2008, the market rolled over. You know, market peaked in what, October, November of 2007? But energy led both on an absolute and relative basis well into the summer of 2008 after most of the stocks had already peaked. So I think this is normal, as opposed to financials, for example, which are an early cycle sector, which tend to lead at the beginning. Sure enough, they led in 2009. They've been lagging. Financials have been lagging since July. For almost a year now, financials have been underperforming. So this is very normal of you know, bull market cycles to see that passing of the torch, to your point, uh, over to the energy sector, you know, especially on a relative basis. Are you attributing this anything to the, you know, we've had a nice rally in crude. I know a couple weeks ago, Gene Epstein wrote that article in Barron's and said, you know, $75 crude. And uh, I just thought about it. And I'm like, man, oh, man, did, did he forget about OPEC? Did he, you know, f forget about all the forces out there? You think that this is uh, this is somewhat tr uh, tied to the crude rally? And uh, what's your outlook for crude here? We've had a nice rally. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I guess sometimes you can make the argument that crude perhaps might lead the energy sector, and I guess maybe on, on a, on a short-term basis, sometimes it does. I really haven't seen any long-term correlations between okay. the energy space and oil specifically. You know, oil, I mean, you could just kind of pull up both charts. Like, look what XLE, for example, if you want to look at the energy sector or OIH, and look what that's done over the last several years, and then look what oil's done. It's kind of just been a, a sideways mess. So what I would say, and, and I tend to, to catch myself saying this a lot lately, 
you know, don't get cute. I feel like don't overthink it. I think that what, what's important here is to really to trade and position yourself based on what you're seeing and less on what you're thinking. You know, you got a lot of people talking about, oh, is this inflationary? Is this deflationary? What bonds are doing or what commodities are doing compared to the stock market? You know, I think that you take each market, and yes, we do a lot of intermarket work, and we can kind of take information from one market to another, but I think it's very important to concentrate on what you have in front of you. You know, if you want to trade oil, trade oil. If you want to trade uh, XLE, trade XLE. If, if, if the trade is there and the opportunity presents itself there, not necessarily you see one thing, so you have to do the other, right? You kind of see where I'm coming from? I do, I do. So, so that, would be my, that, would be my, that would be my way of going around your question and, <laughs> and not answering it. Um, no, no. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it necessarily has to do with crude oil. Um, I think it's more of a cycle thing than anything else. I think oil is going to do what oil is going to do. If I had okay. to guess, oil is probably heading higher. Um, you know, we're making okay. higher lows, higher highs for several years. So it could happen at the same time, sure. So going back to your XLE and your post there from this morning, you were talking, and we do have a lot of paratraders, I think, that listen to the show, and you were talking about a potential setup here of possibly like shorting the SPY and buying the XLE. Obviously, if that you know rotation does happen and XLE becomes relatively strong over to the market, that would work even if the market goes up. And if it starts to go down, obviously that trade could work as well if, if the oil and the energy stocks continue to hold up. Sure, sure. It's, it's, it's much more of a market neutral sort of, uh, sort of scenario, which I like because I haven't liked stocks all year. So if I'm going to be in stocks, I'd rather be in something and shorting maybe the market overall and taking advantage of the spread. And in this case, we can have 20 to 40 percent upside uh, with a market neutral position. Not bad, right? So what else is on your radar here, JC? Because you're obviously, you know, you're liking the XLE, you're liking the energy stocks, but you're saying you're bearish the overall market and you weren't, weren't, you were looking to sell the bounce in the biotechs. Is there other bounces here? Because we've had a nice bounce here in the last uh, 24 hours, really. Is there other bounces here that you're looking to fade? Um, well, I'll tell you, I'll, 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 how about we, we turn the table maybe a little bit more optimistic here. Um, okay. I, I know you guys mentioned Twitter uh, before I came on. I, I, I was pounding the table yesterday, man. I think that that is, I think yesterday is a day that, you know, a few months from now we're going to look back and we're going to point to yesterday. Because when you see a thrust like that, that's, that's not normal. That's, that's very unusual, especially in huge volume like that. I mean, you can't be short this name. I mean, I don't think you can be short at all. Um, and I think it goes a lot higher. I really, really do. I think yesterday was big. I think uh, we can't ignore that. Do you think the valuation is a concern here on Twitter or not? Because, like, I look at it and you think overall the thing's valued at whatever. It is. I'll go look it up right now here. It's like $24 billion. And then when you look at a relative uh, valuation of, like, a Facebook or something here, and Facebook is up at $151 billion, so that's over six times more. Do you think Facebook uh, is worth six times more than Twitter? Just question from valuation perspective yeah i have no idea um yeah you know, you're I'm a, I'm a you're technician i look at price so to, to to speak on valuations i you know that's over you know it's above my pay grade um you know but from a pure price perspective from a supply and demand standpoint um you know we found some support back at those november lows there were buyers then there were buyers now i think that yep. that's interesting and not only have we proven that there are buyers from these levels but let's talk about this thrust yesterday i mean you know, not to, you know, put down their acquisition or, you know, quite frankly, I'm not even sure what the company does that they buy, but I, I'm going to go out of the limb and probably say that that 11, 12% move yesterday was not based on that purchase. I mean, I think that there was more to that, and I think that there's more upside for sure based on that thrust. We can't ignore that. Okay, well, we're getting a pop in the S&Ps today. You have any uh, any levels that you're looking at here? We have we moved up nicely. Uh, good earnings report from Yahoo and Intel here. We're kind of kind of flatlining here uh, at a you know nice round number here, 1850 level. Do you have any? I don't have any numbers up here until you get into the 1860 handle. Uh, is there anything that you're looking at? Maybe our traders should keep an eye on today. You know. I all year, I, I, I've preferred to stay away from the overall market indexes on the long side. If, if I'm going to do anything, I tend to do it on the short side. Um, you know, I just don't like the market. I think we go lower or sideways this year. Um, but if you want to really focus on individual levels, you know, look at all of this support in the S&P 500 throughout March that broke. 
which is right around this 1840, 1850 level. This was also resistance back in January. So the market has a lot of memory here. I think it's going to be difficult for us to just break through here and start rattling and make new all-time highs. I think it's going to be tough. I, I don't think it's out of the question. I think it's possible. It's not something uh, – I don't think it's the high probability scenario, but – um, you know, if we can start breaking above this 1850, 1860, holding above the 50-day moving average, I think it's got a shot to maybe get up close to those all-time highs, maybe 1880, something like that. Again, not anything I'd be betting on, you know, not anything I'd be positioning myself for. But when you talk about levels, I mean, that's, that's really what I'm looking at. In all likelihood, we'll probably just continue to, to kind of just be a sloppy mass in, in the stock market. I think it's going to be a pick your sectors and – you know, more of a, an opportunity to take advantage of different sectors on a relative basis rather than the overall market itself. Um, it's just it's just messy. I like my charts clean, and the S&P 500 just isn't one of those. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you on that one. Okay, we've had uh, J.C. Peretz on All Star Charts, uh, giving us his tech, uh, his take on the uh, on the oil sector and financials and stuff. Thanks a lot, J.C. You put things in. Uh, Simple terms to understand, and I'm sure our, our listeners appreciate it. So have a good trading day, and we hope to talk to you again soon. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, JC.